the engineer <sighs> I can't speak today again the engineering and the modifications that have had to go into this just this swinging arm you wouldn't believe it's been an absolute nightmare but it's it's done now um, that bit of play there is because these haven't been done up yet so what I've got here is um, I've got a brass sleeve that goes into the front the, 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 the pivot point of the swinging arm and then inside that brass sleeve we've got a stainless steel piece and the stainless steel piece is slightly wider than the bush the, the um, brass bush so what happens is when this is pulled up it actually pulls against the stainless steel piece so as the brass bush can actually pivot freely that's the whole intention of it so as when I tighten this up it doesn't bind at all it's completely free so anyway that's done so what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to get the cat hairs off it I'm going to get the suspension um, I'm going to get the suspension I'm going to put that on all the shock absorbers and then we'll see where we go from there and then I can possibly mount the batteries back in and everything else and then turn it upside down and then I can start working on all the wiring up the front the wheels on, the swinging arms are on, the suspensions on so that is clamped up very tight and there is no binding on the swinging arm itself these things are, I've still got to tidy these up, I, I, I don't know what to do with them yet um, maybe I'll just flatten them off, cut them off and fall them down, I don't know yet uh, the shock absorbers, they're all done tightened up and everything, the back wheel is all done, it's in position the only thing I'm a bit concerned about is the tyre now I don't know if it's the tyre that's not straight as in the tyre's deformed and it won't straighten or it just hasn't gone on the bead properly, I don't know yet I've got another inner tube coming for this purely because this isn't the right tube that's fitted in here uh, it was just to make sure that it inflates and works so what I can do now is I can put the battery back in hopefully I can put the top plate on and then I can start working on the rest of it which is the wiring just to add as well all these bars these tubings we've got that one there uh, there's one on the suspension here to pull it out a bit there's another one on the suspension there to pull that out a bit they're all made of this stainless steel bar now if you've ever tried to cut stainless steel you know how bloody hard it is so what I've had to do is put this in the drill and then get the hacksaw and then you file it down we get a dremel on it to flatten it all off and tidy all the ends up and you know cut it to size the other thing as well this uh, there's four bolts that actually hold the, um, the, 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 the handlebar mounting the stem mounting or whatever it is on the underside here which obviously the speed controller is sitting over the top of but these two here because the battery actually covers it um, I'm going to have to stick I've had to put the countersink screws in drill the holes out, drill the countersinks and everything else and then I can put that over there and then I'll put a piece of foam I think a piece of foam over the top of that just to make damn sure that nothing shorts out jobs are good so if I need to take it off again it'll be easy right before I put the top on, which is here, all the padding that I need is put on the top, like that, and then that goes on there. But when it's all squashed down, which it's all flush, it should, <laughs> it should fit. It's very Height, let's put it that way. This padding that I've put on here is, is to stop the battery from moving outwards. That's the maximum I can I can give it, but it will stop it. It will. Uh, and obviously everywhere else. This isn't going to come out because it's attached to the battery. This isn't going to come out because of the cables. It is squashed in, it is, it is secured by the battery, and the same with this, everything's secured by everything else. I don't like this, listen, I don't, 
<laughs> Captain type's horrible because <laughs> it cracks. It's in. It is very, very slightly bowed in some places, but it's it's minuscule. What can I do next? I've got to do the tyre. I've got to change the inner tube because that's turned up. Where is it? The cat's eating me inner tube. Oh, absolutely fantastic. That is the correct inner tube for that tyre, so I've got to take the tyre off first to make sure that this tyre itself isn't buckled, that it's the inner tube that's at fault or the one that I fitted because it was the closest I could get. Apparently this is the correct inner tube which is a 10 by 3 and a half or 10 by 3 I can't remember. So I'm going to do that now. When you want to fit in the tube, blow it up, not all the way, get talcum powder on it. Somewhere that it doesn't make a bloody mess. Number one, it makes sure that there's no cuts in it, and number two, it eases assembly. So I've now got to get that on there. I can't really move this any further forward, so you can't see what I'm doing. That's got to go on there. That's a better bloody fit that is. So now I can let it down. And now I can put that in which has got the tube thing there. It takes but a minute. Just making sure that the inner tube isn't pinched anywhere because obviously there's no real way of seeing if it is. Because when I got this, this wheel, uh, the tyre was flat and when I took it off they'd actually pinched the inner tube and you could actually see it between the two, the two halves. I can see the tube in there. I can see it down that bolt hole. Before anybody mentions it, I have tried tubeless, believe me, I have, but I can't get uh, the valve won't go in. I've tried different types of valve, different sizes, different everything, but it just will not go in. Now, there's a lot of people who've tried to inflate these and they can't do because they can't get the valve. Now, I know it's a bit cringy, but there you go. Can't hear any leaks. <laughs> it's always a good sign, isn't it? hasn't gone on the bead properly so what I'm going to have to do is let the bloody thing down again. That's good enough for testing. I don't know, I think I may actually get some um, washing up liquid or something on there just to help it 
when I redo it, um, it's all right for testing. I'll, let, I'll need to leave it overnight to make sure it doesn't go down or anything. Because uh, it's pointless doing a lot with it if it does. So, I can put the wheel back on. Right, that's enough for the test. So, I've got to turn it on there. Right, it has to be done in sequence. It's the same as all my other e-bikes and everything that I've built. You have to turn the BMS on without the controller on. I'm going to find the buzzer. I don't know where I put the buzzer. I've lost it. I'll put it somewhere safe. Obviously, it's never going to be found again there. The sequence of, of, of fire up is the BMS gets fired up. After the BMS is fired up, and I can, I can then enable the kill switch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my old throttle, which is here, and I'm going to wire it up because I need to test to make sure everything is working perfectly again. I've now got the throttle and the kill switch wired up. I need to put the buzzer on because I can't hear. So that's the BMS that should be on now. So if I start VBMS up and it's fired up, output is enabled, everything's enabled. Here's the kill switch which is very precariously wired up and you'll probably be able to see the indicator as well there. See the LED? Yes. So that comes on. So the throttle should now be live. Well, the tyre's a bit out, of, bit out of shape at the minute. Right. I mean that goes at stupid slow speeds as well. Let's see how many amps it was drawing. So what I've got to do now is Number one, I've got to find the buzzer. I don't know where that's gone. And number two, I'm going to start putting the stem on so I can get the front on. I've also bought a new tyre. Uh, this is a road tyre. It doesn't match that tread, but, you know, it's it's better than the knobbly one. The knobblies make a right bloody racket, but I'm not, obviously not going to be using it much off-road. It just made sense. So, I'm now going to put the stem on. Yes. Mm -hmm. 